Hello guys, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. I'm here with Sam for the final words. You would have seen the player ratings or scoring the players rather earlier on. Make sure you watch that video as well. You can see what we rated at Miguel Miron after he scored his second goal in two games for Newcastle. Uh, just before we start the last word, Paul has got a video out for the Newcastle women's team uh, and it's on the under 23 channel, it's our second channel. If you want to give that a little look, Paul's been a lot of gr uh, hard work and determination in that and it's his video. So we're going to make sure that we'll try and get as many people as, uh, watching it as possible. Right, line up, Sam. Steve Bruce surprised us all, I think. Obviously, Hayden is right wing back. Both a long staff start in the centre midfield because I think we thought Hayden might start there. Um, and then obviously, Joe Linton starting as well, which is another talking point. Before the actual game started, were you happy with the starting 11? We were trying to figure out just what system he was playing because obviously, no Yedlin, no Mankio. We kind of were expecting Kraft to feature, but. God knows where he is. Yeah. So we thought, well, is Clark playing right back and Dummett and Fernandez in the centre and Willems left back or is it three at the back? It was a bit of a bizarre one. And then we were told in his presser yesterday, Carroll was back fit. That didn't happen. And Joe Linton and Gale. I like Gale was a surprise, wasn't it? Very much so. I don't think many people would have been overly happy with the lineup when it came out, but shows what we know. I think the jackpot for the lottery yesterday was £70 million. I think he had more chance of winning that than getting that starting eleven right before the game. Um, let's talk about New the, obviously the first half and what a start by Newcastle. Seven minutes on the clock and Newcastle take the lead from Miggy Almiron. Fantastic football. Dwight Gale chests it off. I think to Villemes who runs down the uh, left flank. Plays a lovely ball into the box and then a nice little flick falls into the path of Miguel Almiron with a first time finish in the top corner. One of arguably Newcastle's better goals this season and Miguel Almiron has got some confidence at the minute. Coming into his own now, isn't he? He's really starting to show why we paid £24 million for him last year. We started electric. It was really, really... We thought we were in for a really great game uh, at the start. It was really showing some promise and once we'd established the system Bruce was playing, again with three centre-backs, two wing-backs, Hayden as a makeshift right wing-back, we've got our shape the team was balanced it looked like the Newcastle we were used to players started to show their old form like Sean Longstaff in the middle of the park everything was going swimmingly it was great what did you make of Almiron's finish though because in, in certain areas we've had other players that have you know I'm not going to just put Julian now as a scapegoat but if he has that chance I don't think that's going in a few months ago Almiron would probably miss that but now he's got a bit of confidence behind him that you get a break and it, it goes for you it's we know from his time at Atlanta he scored in uh, fits and spurts so it's no surprise to see him get three in the space of a few weeks for sure for sure we weren't in the lead for long I think we only lead for about seven or eight minutes and we'll obviously get their equaliser uh, from Den Donker <sighs> poor poor goal for Newcastle to give away corner it literally just hits Den Donker he's just there by himself Fernandez has got to do better marking him and just puts it in an empty net and you're just thinking have we just given such an easy goal away all for that? Because it, it just seems so pathetic, really, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, this is where we get a bit negative. Obviously, the, uh, the I should just say, as the team went out, just to go, just to briefly sidetrack, the profit of doing Mr Clinton Ford before the game, wanting to surrender for having Williams against Troy Ore. We've said this about Fordy in the past, okay? Fordy wanted Shelby dropped and Shelby scored something like three goals in four games or something stupid like that. So sometimes listen to Fordy, but sometimes don't listen to Fordy. But, uh, yeah, to, I'm yeah, sitting next we'll to him. We'll leave that one for another day. I'm yeah. sitting next to him at uh, Arsenal, so I'll bring some positivity for you, pal. It's all right. Um, yeah, to get back to, uh, on track. Yeah, so that's whilst, a top we're on negative. Yeah, talking about, talking about Wolves' goal and we and look, poor defending. Newcastle should have done a lot better. Yeah, it's another goal conceded from a set piece, which is really irritating because if you keep doing the same things, the same mistakes, the outcome's going to be the same. We're going to concede goals. Things have got to change. We conceded two from a set piece down the road at Villa the other month, and we've done it again here. They're a decent side, these. You can't afford to be giving away goals like we've done for the past month or so now. Towards the end of the first half, obviously Wolves... Wolves probably looked like more had more chances of score, and obviously I think of Jimenez's header, yeah. which was well saved by Martin Dubravko. Lee would probably have got a good shot on that on the vlog if because of where he was sitting um, in the front row. He loves the front row, does Lee. Um, but 
yeah, if anyone was going to score, it was probably going to be Wolves. Second half after the two injuries to Paul Dummett and Dwight Gale. Just touched it, briefly touching on them, Sam. Are we... Is the injuries to Dummett and Gale... They're not really regulars for Newcastle at the minute, but it's still bodies that we probably need. Yeah, it could be worse, but it could be better. Uh, Dummett looked really assured in the 15-20 minutes he was on for so that's a bit of a shame Gale if we're moving him on that'll only really affect a transfer so it probably doesn't affect us too much uh, half time came at a good time for us because that was just when Wolves were starting to turn the screw a little bit Dubravka made a good save yes we were we were lucky to get the uh, the whistle when we did because we were, were hanging on because when so many changes were made again we thought oh could this be another Leicester we've lost two players straight straight away again but half time came and we were able to regroup and get the shape back second half Newcastle I don't think had many chances at all second half um, I can't remember Patricia even no. taking a goal kick that tells you how much Newcastle had in the second half but it was controlled possession that, that Newcastle had at times and Sean and Matty Longstaff I thought were pretty comfortable against the likes of Neves and Matinho and then yes probably Wolves probably had two good chances the one short of uh, Matty Longstaff rather clearing one off the line couldn't believe how that didn't go in to be honest um, and then obviously Dubravka making a fantastic save um, from Doherty's header I think I think it was Doherty at the far post I could be completely wrong if I, if I am I apologise but it's a fanta fantastic header it looked in all the way and Dubravka somehow claws with both hands away from the goal and Newcastle managed to get it clear but it, if anyone was going to win the game Sam it was going to be Wolves yeah. I think I think Bruce was just happy to get, get the goal sit back and get the point yeah exactly we were solid in defence today we were solid in midfield uh, Matty's tenacity Sean's composure in the centre of the park was fantastic you were right in what you're saying that there was only one team that were going to go on and win the game and that was what well, that was Wolves because um, we had no outlet up front Joe Linton was isolated how many times have we heard that this season do you drop next week for Chelsea because yeah. it's Rochdale Roch still game up there's going to be changes regardless but if you think of Newcastle's next big big game in the Premier League it's Chelsea do you go do you know what you're not playing well enough maybe you just need a couple of games out of the firing line and go right Let's just see after the next after a couple of games what you like because at the minute he just seems he just seems like he's not helping the team at all. If Carroll's fit, he plays. So I'm guessing he wasn't fully fit because he only got 10, 15 minutes at the end today. Um, do you play Joe Linton against Rochdale? See, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play Joe Linton against Rochdale because at the minute, look, fans aren't happy with them. And they'll probably say quite rightly because of his performance, especially against Rochdale last week. And then you look at you look at the chance like today look he couldn't have been any worse than last last week but he could have had a hat-trick last week people forget that he had big chances but it's his work rate I think that's what people put people off uh, of Joe Lennon do you know what I'm going to disagree with you slightly I would play him against Rochdale but I would stick him up there with Elias Sorensen or Tom Allen with two up front because there's no point in playing five at the back again against Rochdale <laughs> two up top four at the back that should be ample to beat Rochdale at St James's Park Tuesday night and then I would take him out for Chelsea at the weekend Carroll starts and then you'd have Armour on and ASM on the right please hopefully hopefully let's see what Steve Bruce had to say after the Newcastle's 1-1 draw against Wolves today and we looked a real threat a little tweak in Dwight coming in for only second start I thought he was bright and made the goal and I thought we were very good and unfortunately like we've seen against Leicester we've picked up a couple of injuries, probably three really. Joe's limped on, but not 100%. And um, unfortunately, we've it, it, that hindered us, you know, that, that hindered us a little bit. But it's um, the resilience and the effort and their endeavour. I think we deserved it. We deserve something. Our goalkeepers pulled off two great, two great saves. And um, for that, we, we'll take a point. And we're back. If we look at the other results, obviously... Obviously, Tottenham Liverpool are playing right now, which doesn't concern Newcastle United at all, really. Um, but Southampton beating Leicester, from what I've seen, I think it was 2-1. Um, Man United beating Norwich, and Norwich is like a bit out of the way now. Everton winning, keep Brighton down there. Burnley getting beat, keep, keeps them down there. For me, Sam, it was kind of it, it is a bonus point what we've got yeah. today because when you look at the other teams, I know Bournemouth play Watford tomorrow, but it's a point more than what most teams have got down there. Yeah, if we're all honest with ourselves, we were coming here today 
clutching at straws hoping for a point and that's what we've got so it is a bonus you're right in what you say um, we still look to that gap between where we are in I, mean, I assume we're still in 13th 12th around that yeah the table will be up now which will tell you when your castle are so we still need to look at that gap between ourselves and 18th I think we're four wins away from safety so get four wins and a cup run you'd probably take that this season. Newcastle should be looking at the FA Cup a bit more seriously 100%. now because of, look, the draw is nice. It's not a gimme that you're going to beat Rochdale and then if you beat Rochdale, yeah, you've got to play Oxford. We sh- on paper, we should be getting through at least the, to the fifth round. However, look, you, you're saying four wins from now to the end of the season. Yeah. You have New- Newcastle surely have got a bit about them to get four wins from now to the end of the season to make sure they're playing Premier League football next season. Considering the likes of Norwich, Burnley, Villa... They've all got to come to St James's. Southampton still got to play. We've still got to play Brighton, uh, Watford. We've got to go look, to Bournemouth. Yeah, look, we've got this winnable games on paper. Um, but what Newcastle have stopped, Sam, they've stopped losing games. You yeah. know, Man United, Leicester, Everton, three really big defeats, really, in games that we didn't really look like getting points from. Everton, when you could possibly argue that we could have got something from the game. But this is a game which probably no one expected to get anything from. So... Have you got to take that positivity into the game against Rochdale and Chelsea in particular? Of course you have. It's 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 a it's it's a boost. It's stopped the rot. It's stopped the run of defeats. If we can get Rochdale out of the way on Tuesday, we've not got a bad record at home to Chelsea. They're a bit hit and miss, so I wouldn't put it past us to get a point or three. So a win against Chelsea, Sam, he's a bit optimistic, isn't he? Yes, but <laughs> I think it's more than achievable. Should we get the players that are returning? Who knows? Lascelles could be back. ASM could be back. And all Shelby of a sudden, could be back. All of a sudden, you've got the proper team again that was winning two, three games on the bounce earlier in the season. Well, Newcastle obviously get the point today, and obviously they move on to the FA Cup on Tuesday, which will be out of course. Um, just before we leave, obviously we've got the Facebook group and the YouTube group, the sus- subscription uh, pages, which you can get more access to Newcastle fans TV. Oh, it's a small little fee, but. Look, you're getting more than what just normal subscribers would get, which you know is an added bonus. Um, but yeah, if you want to be involved, the links will be in the description for that as well. But yeah, me and Sam are just outside Molyneux. It has finished 1-1. If you've got any comments, get them down below in terms of who you thought that our man of the match was today. I think we're probably me and Sam are kind of agreeing with Almiron. What's more important? This is a question for you. What's more important for next week? Is it Rochdale in the Cup? Of Chelsea in the league next week, where do your priorities lie? Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV. And from a misty, gloomy Molyneux, we'll see you next week.